Hello tarot lovers and welcome to my channel. If you are looking to connect with your tarot deck, then you have come to the right place. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and on this channel, we talk about building your spiritual confidence so you can listen to your intuition and read your tarot cards with ease. And today we are going to be talking about the judgment card, the call to action card, card number 20 in the tarot deck, in the, the major arcana in the tarot deck. Goodness me, one more card, one more card, and I have finished the major arcana. And then we're going to start talking about the minor arcana, and I'm going to be looking at that in terms probably more of um, the numerology than anything to show you how that those um, minor arcana cards fit together. And that certainly can help you have an even greater understanding of the cards. So why do I suggest studying Rider Waite Smith? And I know some of you look at me and say, oh no, not Rider Waite Smith again. But any tarot teacher worth their salt starts with this deck. And the reason they start with this deck is because it is the deck that has summarized all the decks that have gone before. And I think Arthur Waite, and particularly Pamela Coleman Smith with her images, which go across the entire deck, um, has done an absolutely marvellous job at putting this deck together and making something that has just become timeless. I mean, the images, you can look at them and think they look a bit dated. Um, they are traditional images, and these traditional images are what teach you classical uh, symbolism. And when you learn classical symbolism, you can go into an art gallery and you can look at pictures and know what they mean. I was on a walk um, a couple of weeks ago with a whole lot of people I didn't know. And there was this mural on the side of a building and nobody knew what it meant. And I took one look at it, looked at the colours, looked at the way everything was placed and started describing what it meant. And they all just looked at me and I thought, yes, well, one good thing about learning the tarot. Um, so if you are interested in really increasing your esoteric spiritual study, then studying this deck is also a really good place to start because it encompasses so many different areas of spiritual study. It is amazing. Um, I'm in the process of writing a very clear introduction to the tarot course. And in that course, I'm going to actually be doing more than just this is what the card means from a top-down perspective. I'm actually working on trying to give you an orientation to understand where to start and understand why we start with the Rider Waite Smith and understand why that deck is so pivotal um, and understand the spiritualism and where tarot came from and the spiritual study that came before and why the Golden Dawn was such a central organization to understanding magical and spiritual study. So stick around, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notifications bell. And I'm going to spin the camera around now and talk to you about the judgment card. See you soon. So let's have a look at the judgment card. Now, when we look at the correspondences, we look at the um, Golden Dawn correspondences because they are, they're a bit like a measuring stick. And I will talk to you more and more about the Golden Dawn. I want to do a whole series on the Golden Dawn and talk to you about that as time goes on. So at the moment, I'm focusing on on the symbolism of the cards and it's taking a little bit of time this is the second last major arcana card and we still have all the minor arcana cards so if you're loving this stick with me because i'm keeping on working my way through the cards to actually show you um the the cards explain the meaning in a very different way to how a lot of the teachers do online so the Golden Dawn title is the spirit of primal fire or the fire that is within us. So if we think about the numerology, we're looking at, we're going right back to two. So we're looking at card number 20 or two plus zero equals two here. So other cards that reduce to two are the Justice card, and the High Priestess card. 
So two is about balance of opposites. It's about the polarities in our life. So if you think about the High Priestess, she is the most psychic card in the deck, but what she's talking about, and it's interesting because I've been looking at some of the history of the cards, and she used to be the Popess or the female Pope in the tarot deck which was a religious connotation, which would have had a very different meaning to the meaning that she now has morphed into, which is a more spiritual, intuitive, psychic un or, or ruler of the unconscious type of meaning. So it's really interesting how the meanings of the cards change as we all talk and talk and talk about them and, and, and they move with the way the world has changed in terms of our understanding of life. So we've got balance of opposite. We've got um, feminine and masculine energy um, in this card and also this idea of conscious and unconscious. Then we've got the justice card, also ruled by 2, 10 and 1, 11, which um, uh, 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 2. So if you look at the justice card, um, you're looking at a card that talks about uh, getting away with it or not getting away with it, good or evil, balancing what's wrong and what's right. So again, balance of opposites. So how does the judgment card come into being balance of opposites? The judgment card is a card that is a call to action. So it's this idea of will you keep going as you are or will you heed the call and take action in your life? Will you uh, be judged for your choices that you've made in your life? Will you allow yourself to be judged or will you set, step back and sit in the shadows? So it's, it's one or the other. It's a balance of opposites. You are either stepping in or stepping out, if that makes sense. So it is based on the, the card is ruled by the planet Pluto. And if we look here at our Golden Dawn timing, even though this is a, um, a planetary card, we can come up with timing because, of course, um, um, Oh, what are we doing here? Pluto in Scorpio. I'm sorry. So because Pluto is in Scorpio, we can use the dates of when Scorpio falls in the uh, astrological calendar to come up with dates that um, you could use if you want to use this card for timing. So pl the Pluto is about unconscious transformation, so it's personal transformation. Will you heed the call to be something different to what you are now? Are you going to step into that next stage of growth? Um, are you going to recognize any unconscious or buried needs that surface and need to um, be expressed? Are you going to heed the call? And often in life, we get all these messages um, I have a friend who's had all of a sudden this massive change. I actually went to Queensland and saw her and she was telling me about all these things in her life that were just not right. And all of a sudden I said, put it out there. Something will come up. Something will come up. She said, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. I said, something, something will come up. And sure enough, no sooner did I leave than a friend called and, and all these things fell into place. So she had a choice then. She could either heed that call and she had all these symbols. She's Elizabeth, I'm seeing all these threes everywhere. So, you know, you either heed the call or you don't. And that's basically about allowing yourself to go into transformation into something else. The Hebrew letter Shin. Now, if we look at here, this little thing there. I might actually, I wonder if I can find the full card in my big deck and you'll see it a bit clearer. On the full card, on his jacket, and if you go back to my original um, description of the full, I talk about this. 
Um, of course, every time I look, you know, I think I'll get these cards out and I think I'm ready and then I'm not ready. All right, now I'm ready. <laughs> now I've got it. Um, on this card, you can see here, there's a little fork thing. It looks like a little pitchfork thing. That is this. It's a Hebrew letter shin. And it's interesting when you look at this card, there's so much you can miss. Just little details that give you more information about the card. Now, Arthur Waite put the full card at the end. Now, I always say put it at the beginning, but if you look at his pictorial key to the tarot, he puts it at the end. The meaning of the card that he has written actually makes it feel like it should be at the beginning. I actually think his thinking is probably more that it sits outside the deck rather than at the end, if that makes sense. But he has definitely put it at the end of the Major Arcana. But having said that, I've looked at this book. Um, it's interesting to have it, but the descriptions of the cards are in ye olde English, which are really, really hard to read. And some of them don't match the meanings of the cards. So I don't quite know what was going on there with him. So that's why a lot of the time we write our own meanings and because some of the meanings are a bit old fashioned. And there's some things in here about some of the cards indicating what a person might look like if you were doing a reading for someone, if someone was coming into their life. But the problem is it's not very multicultural. We love you, Arthur Wade. We do love you. So there's all of that. So anyway, getting back to Shin, why is that there? Well, Arthur Waite translated, um, Eliphas Levi was this amazing occultist who wrote some amazing things about understanding the tarot. And Arthur Waite translated a lot of his work or two uh, particular books of his work from French into English. They probably need to be translated again, poor Arthur, because he, he wrote in this style that is really hard to read, but that's, an, that's for another day. So basically, the reason he's put that there is because he's changed the placement of the fool from where Eliphas Levi wanted the card. So Eliphas Levi placed the fool between judgment and the world and, and called it shin, which is a slightly different interpretation of the meaning of the Hebrew letter than the judgment interpretation that Arthur Waite has given. And this is where, when you're studying the tarot, it starts to get really confusing because everybody has a slightly different view of where the cards should be. And when you go back and you look at the older decks before these more modern English decks, such as um, the, the Rider Waite and the Toth Tarot by um, Alistair Crowley and the Golden Dawn Tarot and um, Paul Foster Case's Tarot, which we haven't even looked at yet, um, everybody's got a slightly different take on it and it gets to be really, really confusing. So I recommend you start with Rider Waite You've, and I recommend you follow along with me because I'm going to be talking about all of these things in my introduction to the tarot and a lot of people don't even go into this stuff because it gets really confusing. Believe me, even I get a bit confused. But um, recognising that there's a little nod to Eliphas Levi there in that jacket is just extraordinary it's fabulous it's about history it's about the history of the tarot it's really good so so the hebrew letter shin if you're looking at it in the full card we're looking at stepping out into personal growth so we talked about the fool and we said that you know he's uh, he's got his his bag and he only takes with him what he needs he's looking upwards and outwards and he's not worrying about all the things that might go wrong he's stepping out in an innocence of heart and only taking what he needs out there into the world and not letting anything hold him back this card is about the call to transformation so it's a little bit of a different take on the meaning of the of of the letter. So the letter Shin is about the fire of transformation. It's about healing, 
Um, it's about healing, but it's about destroying in order to restore. So it's about, you know, knocking down in order to, you know, knocking down, destroying with fire, coming through the fire in order to be something new. So it's about personal growth through life. And so this is why Arthur Waits put this card at the end of the deck, card number 20, it's the second last card. You've been all the way through the major arcana. You've taken your journey. You've learned all of the lessons you need to learn. And you are just about complete in the world card. So this is about taking that last call to action. Are you going to learn from all the things you've, learned, you've, you've experienced in your life? So that is the judgment card. Let's have a look at the symbolism. Blue skies, again, clarity of thought. And of course, the angel, the angel Gabriel, who appears many times in this deck. If you wanted to just do um, uh, Enochian angels, there's all, you know, there's a whole lot of Enochian angels that appear in the tarot. The tarot really has a little bit of everything, particularly the Rider Waite Smith. And so you can use that as a cue to say, oh, I'm going to go and learn about this now. Oh, I'm going to go and learn about that now. Um, and it, it's an amazing central tool to all of the occult study and spiritual study that you could want to do. So Blue Sky, he's got a um, trumpet, clarity of noise, clarity of thought. It's a clear call. Will you heed the call? Snow-capped mountains always mean spiritual journey. Here's another example of them here on the full card. Here you are with your spiritual journey. Red symbolism, the red wings, passion and vitality, um, reminding us to be uplifted and reach our full potential. The cross on here um, is, is, has different meanings with different cultures. Um, the ancient Greeks saw this red cross. Now you'll see it here. It's got like little red hashes over yellow. Um, Pamela did some beautiful paintings of these cards, which I believe do no longer exist. The problem she had when they came to translate it into printing back in 1910, they just didn't have the technology to recreate the painting she did. Um, and so when they've tried to create some of the colours she used, um, they've, they've turned out a bit interesting. Funny little cross, cross hashes and things. But it's a, essentially a beautiful orange red. So the Greeks saw the cross, the cross with, the equal, with, you know, with equal length and size to represent north, south, east and west. So this idea that the trumpet is calling across the world. Um, the Aztecs saw the cross as meaning a meeting place of God. And again, it's very traditional view of spiritualism in this deck. Arthur Wade was actually very Catholic underneath it all. So there's that playing out in the cards all the way through. Um, so the cross on, on the trumpet is a call for fairness, sound judgment, um, and the cross can also be identified as, um, I'm just going through my notes here. You don't need to learn all this off by heart. You really don't. It's getting the essence of the meaning through looking at the symbolism. And what I want you to retain is this sense of the meaning of the card. Um, the cross of St. George that was flown in the religious crusades. And it was chosen to represent the French and the English troops. And of course, you know, Arthur Wade, I think, in his thinkings, he was just, he was very English centric. So maybe there's a little bit of that in there too. So this call to battle, this call to um, stand up for what you believe in, this call that reaches all sections of the earth is what's represented by that flag. Um, the horn of judgment. So the shape of that horn is the horn of judgment. It's awakening the dead back to life. It invites you to look within and, and see what's, um, uh, whatever's calling you to take account of in your life. Um, 
So the open coffins is releasing you from anything that's held you back that's gone on before. Outstretched hands, they've got their hands outstretched, being open to new knowledge, ideas and challenges and being open to accepting the higher knowledge that's coming from the angel Gabriel as she calls you to take account. Uh, nakedness, again, innocence, openness, honesty and bare truth. There's nothing holding you back. Um, and this idea, it's almost, it, the card is almost like a day of judgment. So there's a link back to the lover's card with Adam and Eve and this idea of removal from, from paradise because of choices that were made. Um, and so this idea of this day of judgment is about what have you done with your life? You've gone out into the world, you've accepted the good and you've, you now have understanding of innocence and experience, good and evil. What are you doing with your life? Um, you can see there's sort of grey clouds here and, and, and the people down here are grey. They're coming out of blue water and we know that blue water is always emotion and the grey people is, is, is basically they're rising out of confusion into enlightenment. And of course, here you've got the yellow hair, which is reminding us that this is a very cerebral experience where thinking and becoming conscious of the what's going on around us and what we need to change. So that is the judgment card. I hope you have enjoyed looking at it from a really different perspective. I'm trying to help you understand what the card means from the symbolism. And you really don't need to memorize all of this. If you want to have all the information, you can get my cheat sheets in my Etsy shop. I make all of my materials very affordable. Um, usually they're on special of some sort or other. So the link will be in the description box to pop over and have a look. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notifications bell and leave me a comment. I love, love, love to hear from you. Take care, everybody, and I will see you in the next video where we are going to talk about the last major arcana card, which is the world card.